trigger warning, this video contains biological facts. A common trend among transgender people these days, especially transgender activists, is to claim that trans people are the biological sex they present themselves as. Some even refuse to acknowledge that they were born the opposite sex than the sex they present themselves as. Do you dispute that you were born a boy? Do I dispute that I was born a boy? I was born a baby who was assigned male at birth. Jen and honey, you were born a boy. Not because you were assigned male at birth. It's because your body was identified as the body of a boy because you had testicles and a penis, which are the male sex organs. I mean, this isn't rocket science. It's basic biology. Now, it's not my intention to mock Janet. I actually do have a lot of respect for Janet Mock. I think she's a very creative and articulate writer. I don't agree with a lot of her positions in the matters of politics, especially gender politics. But still, I can admire people for other things other than their political views. I can look beyond that and see other things about them that I can admire. And to be fair, this is kind of an old interview. Maybe she has changed her views about this stuff and she's now in peace with the fact that she was born a boy. I don't know. But regardless of what she believes, she was born a boy. That's a fact. And that's because her biological sex is male. And that is the case with every transgender woman. Well, except for me, of course, I am a biological queen. Kneel before me, peasant! But despite the fact that transgender women being born boys is a rather uncontroversial fact, this trend to deny this still persists six years after that interview. And if anything, it has only gotten worse. So the origin of this trend, of this idea, are some social sciences that claim that categories of sex and gender were arbitrarily created by society and are not at all a product of nature. Now, if I were to guess, I would say that they claim it is a product of patriarchy. Patriarchy, fuckface! They would say that no one is actually born male or female, but that we are assigned by society male or female at the moment that we are born. And to support this argument that male and female are completely arbitrary categories, they always rely on the 0.05% of people born with ambiguous genitalia or ambiguous gonads. And it's true that sometimes it's difficult to classify someone with ambiguous genitalia and ambiguous gonads as male or female, but technically they are always one or the other, as I have already explained in a previous video. Anyway, if this whole talk about male and female being arbitrary categories created by society and they're all just social constructs with no basis in nature, if all of that sounds really weird to you, it's because it's all crap. Utter absolute nonsense. Males and females are a product of evolution through natural selection. And the difference between male and female humans are not only in their sex organs. In fact, we have many other secondary differences between the sexes, which is why our species is referred to as being sexually dimorphic. I acknowledge that there are some cases of ambiguity, but these are atypical, rare cases. And they are still male or female. They're just very atypical male or female, but they are not a different sex. And this dimorphism doesn't stop at physical characteristics. There are actually a number of studies that show that there are also different patterns of behavior between males and females, including young children. Behavioral psychology, social biology, neuroscience that study the differences between brains in males and females all provide great evidence to show that some of the differences in preferences and patterns of behavior between males and females are a product of natural selection and not only of culture and politics. Now, these are all fascinating fields that provide great research and I will definitely cover more about it on future videos, which is an excellent reason why you should hit that subscribe button. Ugh, suddenly I feel so dirty. Okay, before I bore you to death with the science lesson, let's go back to trans people and see where do we fit in all of this. 
A transgender person is someone who is born in one sex and is socialized according to the gender associated with that sex. Females are socialized as girls and males are socialized as boys. And side note, being social is also part of our biology. But transgender people struggle with the fact that they are being socialized in a gender that they don't identify themselves with or that they feel that they don't really belong in. And the cause of that seems to be largely associated with our rejection of our own sex characteristics. We feel like the expectations of what our bodies should look like don't match what our bodies actually look like in reality. So there is this incongruence between our psychology and our biological sex. All of that results to a lot of distress and anxiety, sometimes depression, which is what we call gender dysphoria, which is this affliction that we feel because of this incongruence. And it's the actual diagnosable condition that will let uh, medical professionals know if someone should take hormones and go through all of that process to change their gender. Now, I know some activists say that you actually don't need to have dysphoria or change your body in order to be transgender. I don't buy that. I think it's all bullshit and it doesn't make any sense. But if you believe that, it's fine. You believe whatever you want to believe. I'm not going to be hostile to you. I'm not going to call your names. I'm not going to call you transphobic and try to deplatform you on social media because you disagree with me. It's totally okay. Oh, I'm such a generous queen. So, being aware that the fact that our physical characteristics don't match what we expect that our body should look like is an integral part of being transgender. So if you are a boy with gender dysphoria, for example, is the very fact that you are biologically male, that you have the body of a boy, then really wants to make you want to change your body. Because you want to be a female so badly that you go through all of this really expensive process and painful process, and it's painful not only physically but also psychologically to make your body look like the body of a female or at least less like the body of a male. But all of these changes, hormones, surgeries, they do change some aspects of our biology but they don't in fact change our biological sex. First, it's because these changes are artificial. Even the phenotypical changes caused by cross-sex hormones, they are artificially created. Now many trans women, and I was one of them, will point out that many cisgender women, or genetic women, which is how Australians used to call cis women back in the day, also need to take estrogen in their menopause and that doesn't make them less female. Well that's true, but the reason why women in their menopause need to take estrogen is because their ovaries stop producing eggs, not because they were born with testicles. It's a huge difference. The second reason why transitioning doesn't change your biological sex is because most of these changes are in fact cosmetic. Even gender reassignment surgery. A trans woman's neo-vagina and neo-cervix are redesigned male sex organs. They are male organs that have been changed in order to appear like the organs of a female. But they are still male tissue. All the cells in that part of your body are still male cells. They have XY chromosomes. And before some of you point out, I am fully aware that there are chimeras, but these are another extremely rare condition. Most trans women are not chimeras. So okay, we established that trans women are biologically male. Well, except for me, of course. So would it follow from that, that they are men? Well, I don't think so. Remember in the beginning of the video where I mentioned the socialization process of boys and girls? This is an important distinction that I make between what is biological sex and what is gender. Now, I don't think a complete dissociation between the two is possible. They are very much related to each other, but they are not the same thing. And I think the best example to try to explain this difference between the two is the case of feral children. Feral children are children that are separated by humans at a very young age and are raised by wild animals. Now every feral child is either a human male or female, but they don't really behave like boys and girls. If they are raised by a pack of wolves, for example, they behave like cubs because that's how they were socialized. They were socialized in a pack of wolves. I would talk to them, they would bark and I would repeat it. That was our way of communication. 
The example of feral children is very good to demonstrate that there is this social element to our species when it comes to these gender and sex roles that go beyond your gonads and your chromosomes. And this is what I refer to as gender. So when a boy later in life decides to take cross-sex hormones, have surgeries to change their body, change their birth certificate, change how they present themselves, they assume the identity of a woman. And for most practical effects, that boy is now a woman. And to be honest, I don't see any reason why anyone would have any problems with that. But whatever, people have weird pet peeves, maybe some are compensated for something, I don't know. But despite trans women being socially women, by the way, when I say that, I mean trans women as I have defined in this video. I'm not referring to the Jessica Yaniv's out there flaunt their girl dicks on the internet, which I guess will be okay if you are a female porn star, but to me, people like Yaniv or Mae Griffin, the person who got me banned on Twitter, are not trans women. They are fetishists. I don't care if anyone will be offended by this, but the way these people behave and express themselves is not the way that women do. It's the way that creepy men do. Anyway, trans women are socially women, but biologically, they are not. And there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing to be ashamed about that. And I specifically brought up trans women in this video because trans men are usually fine with the fact that they are biologically female. It's usually trans women that in fact struggle to accept their biology. And I understand that it's in large part because the vitriol against trans women is much worse, especially coming from religious nutjobs, extreme gender critical feminists, which I do not hesitate to call TERFs, but this vitriol doesn't justify denying basic biological facts. And I know that these people will use these biological facts to attack us, to discriminate against us, to ridicule us. But you know what? Instead of railing against the facts and getting angry and triggered every time someone calls you a male, I suggest taking Tyrion Lannister's word of advice. Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor. And it can never be used to hurt you for watching as always leave it a like a comment share it on social media if you enjoyed this video and as always a big thank you to my subscribers and a massive ultra thank you to my patrons you guys are fucking awesome i've been sarah michelle and i'll see you next time